Joining me today is John Shanahan from Leader One Financial. Welcome, John. Thanks, Dennis. Happy to be here. So uh, let's start by giving us a little bit of background on yourself and how long you've been in the industry and how long you've been working with uh, Century 21 Jelly. Sure. So, uh, you know, started in the industry back in uh, 2006. I started as a processor actually in the industry, um, you know, kind of made, you know, made my way up through the industry, um, end up taking an operations route at, uh, at another brokerage. I was actually their operations manager for a number of years before deciding to kind of go back into the sales side. Um, you know, I feel, you know, my operational background has kind of given me a really well-rounded um, aspect, and, you know, that I can think like an underwriter and I can really set up a file very well ahead of time, you know, as opposed to, you know, setting up something kind of sloppily and then you're kind of going back and kind of backtracking. I feel like I can kind of set expectations pretty well with a client up front, um, you know, in order to prevent any roadblocks down the road. Mm -hmm. Great. And so um, you've been with uh, Leader One as a uh loan officer now um yep so i started with uh with leader one so the company's actual name is onto mortgage we're actually a division of leader one but um the company itself you know onto mortgage anyways based here locally in massachusetts um we're a division of leader one financial which is a larger institution they're actually a co-op um based out of kansas city um so just kind of give a little background on the company you know we're a correspondent lender you know meaning that we do our underwriting mainly in-house we have several different lenders that we sell to kind of in order to best tailor product and pricing for the client scenario because no two scenarios are ever identical um, and you might have certain lenders that have an appetite for for one loan over the other um, so it really kind of gives us the ability to kind of um, shift gears really quickly if there's something that fits into someone else's box versus another mm -hmm. um, you know we also have some brokered loan options that you know uh, for scenarios that don't typically fit inside the normal fannie freddie or government loan bucket you know, like a, like a debt service program or bank statement loans. We also offer some low down payment options for single family investment properties. Um, you know, as far as my background with Century 21 Shelley, you know, I started working with Richard Ferrari out of your office back in 2019. You know, Richard and I go way back. Our wives were actually uh, roommates in college. Um, but that's how I met Craig and, uh, you know, a lot of the, the, uh, the rest of the team. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So um, tell me how the process works. Say I called you today and said, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm ready or I think I'm ready to uh, to, to buy a home. Um, what 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 is the next step? What do I Yeah. Do? So I, I typically start off with doing almost like a preliminary interview, you know, trying to kind of get some additional um, clarification as to, you know, what the client's looking to do, you know, how much they're looking to put down, you know, if they need down payment assistance or something along those lines, or they are first time home buyer, second time home buyers, say an investment property purchase, a second home purchase. I want to get as much information up front just so I can kind of um, have everything to kind of go through when the application comes through. Most times I typically refer people to my online application portal. It's pretty easy. It's just www.johnshanahan.com. Um, I tend to find that's the easiest way to kind of go through just kind of the, the rigmarole of just, you know, getting in your social, getting in your birth date, you know, names, that kind of sort of thing, because people can typically do that on their own time. Um, you know, especially if you have a co-bar who might not there be there for the preliminary call that gives them the ability to kind of work over, um, you know, over the night, and that kind of sort of thing. Um, you know, we can also do an application over the phone if the client prefers or in person. Uh, you know, I have my office right in downtown Milford, Massachusetts. You know, we certainly have people come and do a live interview um, over the phone. I typically take all that information, start running it through um, automated underwriting, make sure pay stubs match, bank statements match. We need tax returns. We need to go through um you know, rental income from a property. I want to make sure I have all those numbers up front. So that way I'm basically advising the client with as much information as I possibly have to kind of set their expectations of whether a scenario is going to work, make sure that, um, you know, the numbers kind of fit into our debt to, rate, uh, debt to income ratios. And basically, you know, they fit into, you know, whichever loan program that they're looking to apply for, whether it be a conventional jumbo government kind of base scenario. Mm -hmm. Um you know, then, you know, we're going to contact a real estate agent, you know, obviously walk them through just kind of our details as far as that we have, you know, as far as based upon the client, you know, if we have to kind of nuance certain things. So for instance, say client is looking at the upper end of their budget, you know, if, if taxes are lower one property versus another, it might work. So it's just making sure we're setting those expectations also with our real estate partners ahead of time um, to make sure that you know, we're setting everybody's expectations up front. So that way we're not running into any roadblocks later on down the road. Sure. And um, so, you know, how long does a typical process take as far as from, you know, an inquiry to uh, 
Oh, so, I mean, if a client's on the ball, I mean, we can certainly turn out a, you know, obviously a pre-approval in 24 hours. That's not a problem. I mean, we've rushed them even quicker than that. But, you know, with some clients, obviously, sometimes it takes them a few days to gather some of the documents. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, we try to get it out as quickly as possible. You know, if, if there is a situation, you know, that we need like a verification of employment filled out by employer, you know, if they're looking to qualify with bonus income or they have variable income, like hourly, you know, maybe they only work certain hours during the week and, you know, it varies during certain parts of the year. You know, we want to make sure we're getting that up front or as quickly as possible. So sometimes those things tend to take, you know, um, take a little bit longer just because obviously we're waiting on some third parties for some of that information. But as far as, you know, your standard pay stub W-2 salary based has good, you know, good assets in the bank. You, you can typically turn those out in less than 24 hours. And talk to me about pre-approval and, uh, how, you know, what's that process and how important is that in the uh, in the home buying? Oh, it's huge. You say, I mean, obviously, because it's going to set the expectations of the client, but also, you know, save the time of the, the real estate agent. I mean, because you have a client who is looking, you know, for 650K houses and the real estate agent is going out and bring them, showing them all these places, but they only qualify on paper for 350 Say, obviously, you got to reset those expectations with the parties and making sure that they're looking at the right properties. Or if there's something that we need to work on, you know, paying off debt, you know, getting credit scores up, um, adding a co-borrower, you know, who might be, you know, at least we can set those expectations and know those up front. So that way we're having as solid a pre-approval as we possibly can when we get it out the door. Yeah. And so how did the uh, the pandemic sort of change the real estate landscape as far? I, mean, I, I would imagine there would be a lot more people looking for single family homes now, you know, <laughs> realizing. Yeah, I would agree. You know, as far as what we kind of saw at the beginning of the pandemic, you know, obviously we saw the rates significantly drop, you know, during that time piece. They've certainly come up since then. Um, I think we saw a real rush to the market. And obviously, with not as much supply, we were seeing basically multiple offer situations on on many different houses, you know, basically kind of driving some of those price rate um, prices up on some of those properties. I think things are starting to come back to earth a little bit at this point in time, you know, whereas, you know, properties are kind of being priced, I think now a little bit more where they should have been. I mean, we're not seeing these dramatic decreases, you know, it's not all the doom and gloom that, you know, you see on Bloomberg and whatnot saying, oh, we're going to see a big crash. I, I don't anticipate that we're going to see any sort of huge crash, especially in a fairly insular market as, as New England is. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, at the same time, you know, we've certainly seen those prices kind of come back to earth, you know, and there's certainly rate options out there, um, even with the rates being up, you know, whether it be, you know, a 10, one arm, seven, one arm that, you know, where they're being priced, maybe about a point below where the rates are for 30 year fixed rate products. You know, we can certainly get in there, get a client in, you know, a manageable payment. And then, you know, we are kind of anticipating rates are probably going to come down a little bit, maybe by Q3 of next year. Um, you know, I think there's opportunity there, you know, with a client holding on to a property for six months, at least that we might be able to refinance them into a, maybe a fixed rate later on down the line, but they're able to save some money and have a more manageable payment in the short term. Excellent. Great. Well, you answered my last question, which was, where do you see, you know, the market going uh, next sure. year? So, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, as far as our indicators and some of the advisors that we've been talking, you know, talking to and listening to, you know, I'm a big follower of Barry Habib. Um, you know, it, we are anticipating those rates are going to come down. I think the anticipation is probably going to settle somewhere in the mid fives, probably by the end of Q3 next year, possibly even sooner. I mean, it really kind of depends on, you know, um, some movement with the Fed and Chairman Powell and a few other things too. But um, yeah, anticipation is rates are going to come down a little bit. Now, are, are we going to see any dramatic decrease? I don't, I don't think it's going to be anything crazy like that. But again, you know, obviously I don't necessarily have a crystal ball. I don't think anyone really saw rates, you know, approaching the eights. Uh, you know, this, you know, at this, you know, a couple months ago, that kind of sort of thing, they've certainly come down since then. But, you know, at the same time, it's, uh, it's, it's been a wild ride. And it's a very unpredictable industry in some, some regards. Well, John Shanahan from Onto Mortgage and um, Leader One, I appreciate your time today. Anything else you'd want our audience to know? before? No, we... th th see, this has been great, Dennis. Thank you so much for, uh, for the opportunity to talk to the team. Thank you. Thank you.